Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at the histology of exchange surface tissues. So we're going to be looking at pictures under the microscope and then talk me through all of the features that we can see. Gas exchange tissues. One of the main tissues that lines the airway of the gas exchange system is ciliated epithelium. It contains two types of cells. Ciliated epithelial cells, which have cilia, which remove mucus, and goblet cells, which secrete the mucus. This mucus is important because it traps dust, dirt, and pathogens, and the cilia are necessary in order to sweep that mucus away so that it can be removed from the body. Cartilage is another tissue in the exchange system. It provides support and prevents the airways collapsing. It is strong, but also flexible. Elastic tissue is needed so that the lungs can expand when they fill with air, but also the elastic nature of the tissues allows them to recoil, which helps to force air back out during exhalation. Smooth muscle layers allow airways to contract, and this can control the diameter of the airways, which allows control of airflow. So when the smooth muscle layers contract, the airways are narrowed, and when the smooth muscle layers relax, the airways are dilated. This allows an increase in airflow during exercise, for example. We need to be able to recognise different structures in the lungs by looking at a cross-section of them and identifying the different tissues. The trachea in cross-section can be identified by a piece of smooth muscle next to a C-shaped ring of cartilage. Then there is a layer of elastic tissue and then lining the airway is ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. Cross section of the bronchus. This time the external layer is smooth muscle with small pieces of cartilage within it. It is not a C-shaped ring. Then we have our layer of elastic tissue again and then again lining the airway is the ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. A bronchial cross section, so this is one of the smaller tubes. This is more simple. The outer layer is smooth muscle with some elastic fibres embedded. And then we have ciliated epithelium lining the airway. But this time, there are very few goblet cells. Lastly, you need to be able to recognise an alveolus in cross-section. So this is a diagram of what we normally see. There is a layer outside that is elastic tissue. And then there is the alveolar epithelium. The alveolar epithelium is different from the ciliated epithelium. It is squamous epithelium, so it is thin, one cell thick, but there are no cilia and no goblet cells. Okay, so we need to be able to recognise these tissue layers in microscope pictures as well. So not just diagrams, but also in actual microscope images of cross sections of tissue. So we're going to look at a bronchial cross section first, and then we'll have a look at bronchus as well. So Here's a bronchial cross section. So we've got our inner layer here. So these pink stained cells. This is our ciliated epithelium. You can see it goes all the way around and it is folded because obviously it has this ability to stretch and expand the bronchioles. So we need it to be folded in order to cope with that. And then the smooth muscle ring layer around the outside. So you can see this smooth muscle layer. It goes all the way around the outside and you've got that kind of flattened tissues, flattened cells in that make that kind of smooth muscle. So that's the layers of cells that we can see in the bronchial. And obviously there are goblet cells in that ciliated epithelium layer. We just can't necessarily distinguish them because we're not close up enough. The, the magnification is enough here. We've also got, because this is a cross section of a load of lung tissue, so there is a bronchial there, but there's also some alveoli. So you can see we've got the kind of folded kind of bunch of grapes uh, shape. And we've got the wall of the alveolus running around the outside. So that's the squamous epithelium layer. So it's very, very thin. It's very sort of just about visible. And then we have some nice blood vessels. Could be probably capillaries here, right up next to the kind of alveoli and the bronchiole as well. And then obviously these, we can tell these are alveoli because they've got these big air gaps in them. There's big air space, big white space. That tells you that that is an alveolus. Okay, so now we can have a look at bronchus. So this is obviously quite a big magnified image, so we can't see the whole circular cross-section of the tube. So we're just looking at kind of a section of it. 
And we can clearly, much more clearly, see the ciliated epithelium here. You can see the nucleus and some mitochondria really clearly. You can see the cilia on the top there poking out into the lumen of the bronchus. And we can distinguish the difference between the ciliated cells, sort of the pale pink cells, and then you've got those dark pink goblet cells in between. So we can clearly see the difference between those two specialised cells in that tissue layer, which we couldn't see as clearly on the bronchiole. And then again, underneath, we have this layer of smooth muscle that goes all the way down. And yeah, it's got those kind of elongated, flattened cells, which is the typical structure for the smooth muscle. This large section under here is the cartilage. So this is obviously a piece of cartilage here. And then there is a gap and then there is another piece of cartilage there. So we know, obviously, it's small pieces of cartilage around the edge of the bronchus. So this is one of those pieces and then there's a gap and then there's a start of another one here. And you can kind of see those fibroblast cells in there for the cartilage structure. And then in between the ciliated epithelium and the smooth muscle, we have this area of what we call loose tissue, but that contains all the elastic fibres, blood vessels, and all the other kind of tissues we'd be expecting to see that would be needing to help support those ciliated epithelial cells just between the smooth muscle and the ciliated epithelium. Okay, so those are the tissues, kind of the structure, where they're found, their function, how they help the gas exchange system in mammals, how they help the lungs, and then also being able to recognise those from microscope diagrams as well. So if you can see cartilage, smooth muscle and ciliated epithelium, it has to be a bronchus or potentially a trachea, but you'll be knowing whether it's small pieces of cartilage or is it big rings of cartilage you'll be able to see the differences in a microscope image and it should be fairly clear to you. And again, you should be able to recognise the alveoli in a microscope image and then be able to label the airspace, label the, the squamous epithelium layer and things like that. And as we go through the course, we'll look at other histological tissue as we go through and get used to seeing these microscope images and therefore being able to pick up various tissues. And as I said, you can also have a go at practising some microscope drawing of these tissues as well. This is why in some videos I explain scratches.